Dero, um, I, I mean, like I said, this is something that we know that has been happening, and um, I, I just can't wait to see how it plays out. Yeah, I think for me, Robert, working here for the last 10 years, there's been some arrivals, right? I can remember when I was still playing in Strasburg. a Strasburg. Strasburg. I remember Matt Weider showing up to Baltimore, okay. and it was a huge deal. Bryce Harper, all these different young players this year. Jackson Churio makes the team and starts opening day for the Milwaukee Brewers. But this is crazy stuff. 2009, I got traded to the St. Louis Cardinals, and I got a chance. Matt Holliday got traded over from the Oakland A's like two days after me, and I got a chance to play an entire second half with Matt. Matt's one of the best teammates I ever had. He's one of the strongest individuals I've yes. ever been in a room with. <laughs> Real quick story. In 2009, when you get traded over to St. Louis, they wanted to test you, fast twitch stuff. Lap pull downs, grip strength tests. That's right up your alley. Right up my alley. Right up my alley. So I go, I go rolling in there, the shredded tank top. Give me the grip strength. No, you Bang! Not. Oh, yeah. And I pinned it. I was a little bit behind pool holes. Maddie comes in 48 hours later and literally breaks the machine. <laughs> and for the rest of the second half, Albert would go in there every day to try the com competitor in pool like holes Albert. to take over Matt Holiday was impressive. But running around the clubhouse in the second half was this guy, yeah. Jackson. And to fast forward to now and the arrival of him taking on the Boston Red Sox, let's get into it because this has been a meteoric rise. First overall pick, eight and a half million dollar signing bonus. And you never know, right, coming out of high school, what it's going to look like. Pause this real quick mm. for me. This is spring training. Bring up his minor league numbers, please. And I want you to understand, he's doing this at 19 years old. 19 years old, I mean, I'm playing college ball. 21 years old, I get drafted. I'm hitting 250 with maybe a couple homers in short season A ball. And I end up going on to play, have a decent career in the big leagues. 19 years old, this guy took apart the minor leagues in one season. Low A ball, 396. He almost hit 470 plate appearances with a weighted runs created plus of 226. All right, let's test him. High A ball. You start to get into these waters, you're facing big league arms. Maybe they can't execute, execute and locate every pitch, but you're getting big time stuff thrown at you. 338 with a weighted runs created plus of 154 and then a triple A to start the season this year. 292 with a 138 weighted runs created plus. So the offensive profile is there. Get back into spring training. He came in thinking he was going to make the team. And I think if you put Mike Elias on a lie detector test, he'll tell you he should have made the team. And I think him coming up on this date signals that maybe they made a little bit mistake in their judgment not bringing him. Yeah. Pause this real quick. I think they realize the Yankees are good. I think they realize they're in a tough division. I think they're getting no production out of their second baseman. And I think they realize they get a, they got a team to win the World Series. And we can't lose this division by one or two games without the best 26 yeah. players on our roster in Camden Yards. And he's one of them. So dive back in. Here we go. Hmm. His swing, he does one thing that we're going to get into that I think is unbelievable. And it's a flawless move. We talk all the time right there. Run that back for me real quick. I just want you to focus as this tape progresses. Get him to his load with the leg kick. Run it. Pause. I just want you to focus on the fact that he gives that right pocket right to the pitcher. Not many people do that. Almost like a coil into the back hip, but he's almost like letting you see that right pocket. He's got the knob of the bat pointed towards the, the Just catcher like, like Jim Tomey like talks Jim about. Like Jim Tomey talks about, Roflo. And we talk about don't hit to the ball, hit through the ball. The beauty in this swing, run this. And we're going to flash it back to high school because I always talk about, Lauren, you are some version of yourself. I mean, this is a gorgeous hack. He doesn't have the leg kick yet or the trust. He's showcasing. He's probably a little nervous at the Perfect Game All-American Classic, and he's not going full engaged. Pause this. 
But when I go down wormholes at night of the draft, obviously Bobby Witt stands out. But in 2012, who's this? Corey Seager. <sighs> Run it. I don't know how he didn't go number one overall. Carlos Correa did. Look at the freedom. I did not look like that in high school. He is and he turned into 10 years, 325. So we have a side angle right there. He kind of profiles like a Corey Seager type player. And then you go through his minor league numbers. Who does he profile like offensively? Bring up the next two boards. Just the confidence in those two years is crazy. It's nuts. Booking it to the big leagues. Notable career minor league OPSs. First off, Juan Soto, 512 plate appearances. He had an OPS in the minors north of 1,000. <laughs> Jackson Holiday, 722. Look at the names on the list. Look at who he's profiling like coming out of the minor leagues offensively. Do the side by side with Juan Soto. You got the board with Juan Soto? There we go. Minor league comparisons. 512 plate appearances for Soto before he came up. Jackson, 722. I mean, it's not far off. I don't know if you get a Juan Soto offensive profile for his career in the minor leagues playing up the shoot with Gunnar Henderson, but who's to say? This guy has had a meteoric rise. And the one guy he reminds me of in the box, let's get to the side-by-side, -side, showing that back pocket to the pitcher, no one did it better than Robbie Cano. Run this. Pause. Mm. They almost give you that lean, almost that preset lean into that back hip. Run it. Run that back for me one more time. Kids, this, what, this is what it looks like when nothing gets in the way of your swing. There's no hinges. Talk mean? about body awareness. Lauren, if you go back and watch people hit, I had moving parts. It kind of looked funky at times and getting through the ball. He, there's a freedom in this swing. This is, this is God-given with a ton of work. Pause. Look at him start to create that leg. We're going to take the bottom hand directly to the baseball. The power's there, the lower half. Run this slow. Pause. I mean, he's perfectly stacked into his lower half. He, that, is, that is the epitome of getting your A hack off. Might need you to shorten up with two strikes, but that is a beautiful thing. Run it. And I just think it's awesome that he's going to get a chance. Here's a front, front angle. Take a look at that hip again. Robbie Cano used to present that all the time in Yankee Stadium. He's grown up in the clubhouse. He won't be intimidated by the big moment. He's been to all-star games. Look at his dad doing IT back in the day. And Maddie, I'm telling you, hit some of the furthest balls I've ever seen. He's got the leg kick like his old man, but his old man didn't present that back hip. So I couldn't be more fired up to see him play. Gunnar Henderson up to shoot the Baltimore Orioles are super exciting. He is a wonderful young man. He was six when he shared the clubhouse with you, d -Row. Six wow. years old. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, I'll be interested to see what the corresponding move is. And uh, Steve Phillips was talking about this on MLB Network Radio this morning, that uh, – if he's fortunate enough to win the rookie of the year, that despite starting the season in the minor leagues, he still theoretically would still have enough service time so that the Orioles could get the uh, extra draft pick if uh, Jackson Holiday is able to win the rookie of the year. But a lot of baseball to be played before that happens.